Dr. Marina Faruqi. Thank you, Madam Deputy President. Madam Deputy President, I've been asked recently about Green's advocacy for abortion law reform. Some ask, is this the right time? Why do it now in the current conservative political climate? The truth of the matter is, we've been waiting for this right time for over 100 years. When will this right time be? How long do we have to make, wait to make a decision about our own bodies without fear of persecution or prosecution? Another 100 years? Neither I nor thousands of other people in New South Wales who have been campaigning for decades are willing to wait any longer. The support that I have received from doctors and the community has been quite overwhelming, and the campaign will only continue to grow in the coming months. Women in New South Wales deserve better than to have our rights to medical privacy be violated, and our right to bodily autonomy and health care must not be a crime. It's time for New South Wales to stand up for women's reproductive rights. It's time for New South Wales to stand up for a right to medical privacy. Abortion law reform in New South Wales is long overdue. After having decriminalized abortion, Victoria and ACT are now moving to enact exclusion zones to protect women and their doctors from harassment and intimidation. They must be congratulated as they take steps to listen to the community and align state laws with community values and opinions, doing what they are elected to do. Shamefully, New South Wales languishes behind other states. Century-old, outdated, and archaic laws govern us, laws that the people of New South Wales neither want nor deserve. Not many people know that abortion still sits in the Crimes Act in New South Wales until they or someone else close to them needs to make a decision about it. The lawfulness of abortion, a health matter, and a medical procedure hangs precariously on the interpretation of the law by a district court ruling in 1971, where the judge deemed that an abortion would be lawful under cir certain circumstances, where it is necessary to prevent serious risk to life or health. This is simply not good enough, not for people needing abortions, not for doctors and health professionals. As Julie Hamlin, a reproductive health lawyer, puts it, there is a kind of taint of criminality that hangs over abortion because the doctors performing it or the women who have it cannot be absolutely confident they're on the right side of the line in terms of the legal test. Because of the uncertainty surrounding abortion law, it has become a confusing gray area, placing women and medical practitioners in difficult territory and at risk of criminal liability. Many GPs in New South Wales do not offer pregnancy termination services due to the fear of persecution or perhaps even prosecution. And we do see this persecution of both women and their doctors outside reproductive health clinics. In Albury, for example, women are harassed every Thursday as they enter and leave a clinic for a simple medical procedure. In rural and regional areas, access is already an issue as there are only a few clinics. Women face extra costs for travel and accommodation. The anxiety of persecution makes things even more fraught. Every woman has a right to privacy, respect, dignity, and courtesy while accessing medical procedures. Lawfulness, Madam Deputy President, is not the only question mark hanging over the current situation in New South Wales. Since abortion is still in the Crimes Act, there is a stigma and taboo attached to it. There is silence around it. No one speaking about it leads to a lack of support and isolation at a difficult time in people's lives. And there is absolutely no reason why there should be shame and stigma surrounding a decision about one's own body. I extend my hand to politicians across the spectrum to join me in bringing this antiquated law into the 21st century and aligning it with contemporary medical practice and community values. An overwhelming majority of Australians support a woman's right to choose, and it's time we, in this parliament, do so as well.